All right, welcome everyone. Hello and welcome to Crypt Cloud Design on Wednesdays. We are going to do a quick little animation using an Illustrator file, and it's actually one for a larger project that I'll be working on a little bit later. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys um, what we're going to be doing today and uh, taking an Illustrator file into Photoshop with the layers and then animating those layers, um, which is a lot of, you know, things that people think you can only do in Premiere or After Effects. So I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop. And uh, then if you even want to export it out as an animated GIF or video, you can even do that from Photoshop as well. So Rachelle, uh, Dizelle, thanks for being here. And actually, let me click on my Facebook thing so I can see the people on Facebook as well. There we go. Eddie's in the house. Demond, Miss Arden, welcome as well. Thomas, thanks for being here. Victoria, Angela, and all the folks that are here from all over the world. So with that said, um, and is it Omar? Thanks for watching as well um, for the first time live. Great. Glad you're here. Let's dive into today's topic and show you how this is going to work. Uh, so let me switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, I've got Photoshop open already. I've also got Illustrator open already, and neither one has a document open. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up the Illustrator file that I want to animate. It's one that I've already built. Um, this particular file, as you can tell, looks like a battery icon. And if we were to go over to the layers icon, there's a layer for each little piece. So there's a layer for the top part. There's a layer for the second, third, fourth, fifth and six the bottom part and we, we'll call that the base there's also a white outline that i created around the whole thing so you can't really see it because it's white but it's a, a white outline and that's the outline layer and i also i believe have some text on that same outline layer it's also in white that's why you don't see it yet but once we get it over to photoshop you'll be able to see the things that are white that you can't see now all right, so what I want to do is I want to animate the battery charging. So just, you know, how it would animate um, the little green bars coming in and cycling through. So to do that, I don't really have a way to do that in Illustrator. That's why we're going to take it over to Photoshop. And you might say, well, why do you just do the whole thing in Photoshop? Because certain things are just easier to draw in Illustrator. That's why we have Illustrator, because it's a drawing program. Uh, so this, using some of the drawing capabilities in Illustrator, this took me very little time to draw this battery. Uh, from scratch and now I want to go ahead and animate it. So with that said, let's go ahead and go up to the file menu. We're going to come down to export as. This is how we're going to get it over. Now you might be thinking, well, can't Illustrator already, I'm sorry, can't Photoshop already just open an Illustrator file? And yes, it can. I'm going to show you what happens when you do that, by the way. Uh, let's go ahead and switch it down to a PSD, a Photoshop file. That's what I want. So it's going to be called battery.photoshop. I'm going to put it in the same folder as the AI file. And when I export, I'm going to get another dialog box. And this is the important dialog box. You can either export it as a flat image or you can write layers and preserve text editability and get maximum editability, meaning make it as Photoshoppy, if that's a word, it's not, but as Photoshoppy as possible, meaning as Photoshop compatible as possible when I open this up. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and export it out really quick. It wrote the file. Now let's head over to Photoshop and let me show you the difference. If I were to just go up to the file menu and choose open and go find that, that original Illustrator file, let's see, it's in my Creative Cloud folder. It should be there. There we go. My Creative Cloud folder under demo. There's the battery file that we just opened up in Illustrator. If I open it up, it will do it, but it will not really give me what I want. If I open it up and just hit OK, it gives me the solid graphic all as one layer, one thing. And then that would be then I'd have to break it apart again to be able to animate it the way I want to animate it. So I'm going to um <laughs> Well, thanks, Omar. Omar says, since I watch you, I can't watch other tutorials. That's high praise. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And uh, yeah, so Tom, it's an animation. You would save it in, in, in RGB, and that's true. But then you lose the ability to save it in layers. I already tried that. So let's go ahead and say, don't save. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and open up the PSD that it did create. So let's go ahead and open up that one. And that one gives me all the layers. 
So I've got all the layers in the layers panel behind my head here. Let's go ahead and pull it out. All the layers are here, ready to go. So I've got even the, the grouping of the layers for the text and the outline. So even that came in as a layer group. So it really did make it as Photoshoppy as possible. I could even double click and edit the text if I wanted to. So it, the text is highlighted now and I can put my cursor in there and change it, change the font, change anything I want about it. So that's why I love being able to put that um, and put that uh, or export it out as a Photoshop file to be able to bring it in as fully compatible as possible. Now that I've got it here with all the layers, I'm gonna add one more thing. I'm gonna add another layer, I put it on the bottom, just so you can see the whole thing, I'm gonna fill that layer with black. So now you can see it. You can see what I actually drew in Illustrator. Uh, and the black background is just there, just for temporarily. All right, so, and we'll even call it black. All right, so now we got the black background and we have all the layers, all the battery built up. And now in order to animate this, you should have at the bottom of your uh, Photoshop window this, this panel that's always hidden. No one ever really clicks on that. No one ever really does anything with that. It's called the timeline. And that's exactly what the timeline is for. It's for animating or creating videos. So if I, if I click the timeline, because this came in as a Photoshop file, it doesn't know that it's going to be a video. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the button right in the middle here that says Create Video Timeline and that will do it for me. Once I do that, it basically has now broken this up, broken it out to all the layers being on the timeline at the same time. And that's great, that's exactly what I want. So the next thing that I have to do now is just simply animate. And there's all kinds of options for animating, cross or uh, transitions. If you had a real video, you'd be able to cut it up, you'd be able to uh, have audio you can bring audio in after the fact you can really you know i've done this before but you could really uh edit a video in photoshop if you really really wanted to all right so i've got the video or the new video on the timeline if i hit play now it's just going to play there's there's nothing really to see so let me by the way let me shrink the video the image down a little bit so you'll be able to see it all right there we go so what i want is after a second or two each thing to come in. So they can't all be there at once. So all I'm going to do is take the, I'm going to start with the base and everything below it. And I'm going to take the second little green icon there, the second uh, indicator, and I'm just going to pull it away in time. So I'm just going to say where this starts. So I can have this start anywhere in time that I want. And it disappears because now it's not at the very beginning anymore. It's a few, it's a few moments in, a few frames in. So same thing for the next one, just pull it further in. Same thing for the next one, just pull it further in. And we just keep doing this until they're all pulled in and staggered like I'm doing here on the timeline. And so the fifth one will come in and you can make these any amount you want, but this is what would happen now if they were to play. They would just build up and then it will just, it's already there, so it would just stop at this point. Well, the next thing I would want it to do is I don't want it to stop and be solid for, you know, a minute. It should start cycling again. So really what ha needs to happen is all the layers need to be shorter. In other words, once it's built up, once it's done that and it's there, I would say right about here is where I would want it to start building up again. So all I would have to do now is take the other end and shrink them down. So let's shrink that one down to that point. Now, of course, they're going to disappear because it thinks I'm at the end of them. That's okay. Shrink that one down. I'm going to basically shrink them all down. So shrink that one down, shrink that one down. But these all stop at the same spot. They're not staggered. So they're staggered on the front end. They're all the same on the back end because it's basically going to start the animation over again. All right, now the black again is just the background, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in. Now you're saying, well, can't you bring the outline in? I tried this, I tried just dragging it and dropping it and it just snapped back. Because actually in a folder like this, you do have to bring over the individual layers. So I'm just gonna, in the layer group, you do have to actually tell it what to do with each layer. Unfortunately, it'd be nice if you could do the whole group at once. All right, so now if I were to play it, there's our loop, there's our animation. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Okay, so 
Yep, Tom. Each each uh, each thing on its each graphic on its own layer, ready to be animated in a timeline. That's why we built it the way we did in Illustrator, or I did in Illustrator. And our animation just plays; it just loops. So you have play control right here in Photoshop. Uh, you have looping controls. You have all kinds of controls here. But now that we've built it, now that it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do, what's next? Well, we, we don't want to export out a Photoshop file. That won't help us. We want to save it as a Photoshop file so we can always come back and edit it. But we don't want to, we need to export it out in a format that will preserve this animation, something that will actually work. So there's two ways to do this. Um, I mean, I'll probably just show you both ways just for the fun of it. Let's go into the file menu and let's choose export, save for web legacy. I love save for web even though it's legacy. And it's a giant animated GIF because this file was really big. You don't want a 59K animated GIF. We want to make, we don't want one that big. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down to, I don't know, let's say 200 pixels high. Oh, that's probably too small. Let's make it, how about 400 pixels high? There you go. That's a lot better. All right, it's 400 pixels high. And, um, and it will always give you the size here. I can even go a little bit bigger. How about 600 pixels high? There we go. That's probably a good size. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and say that it loops forever. You can say once or other. And you can even play it here to see what it's going to look like. Because this supports animated GIF, as you might not might have guessed. And once, I sat, once I'm satisfied with the way it looks, the size and everything else, all my other options... I can then go ahead and save it out separately as a new GIF. And we'll save it to the same folder where we got everything else into that same demo folder. There we go. And away we go. So now we have an animated GIF. To test that animated GIF, I'm going to open up Safari browser. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go find a GIF in that same folder. It's in my Creative Cloud folder. And it's in my demo folder. And there's a new one at the top called Battery GIF. I'm just going to drag it right into the browser window. Maybe not. Why is it not doing it? All right, let's drag it to the icon. It's trying to put it there. Let's drag it to the icon instead. There we go. So now it's opened up in the browser window, and it's just animating just as if I were to now put this on the web, put it in social media, put it anywhere I want it, and that would work. I would... Maybe not have the black background unless I was going to maybe simulate it on a phone because this would be like a charging app running on your phone. So I would put maybe a phone skin behind it or a screen behind it. That's ultimately what the project's going to be when I'm finished. Um, but there it is, an animated GIF working. All right, so now let's go to um, back to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, well, save for web, exporting it out as an animated GIF would be what I want. But let's go in and do a file, export. You also have the ability to render video. So that's right. You can actually make this a real video file out of Photoshop directly. H.264, whatever quality, whatever size you want. You can do all of these options right here, and it'll make an actual MP4 that you could put on YouTube or put anywhere else that supports video. Maybe you want to put it on your Instagram as a video. So you could do that as well. Uh, now, again, the size, it's going to create a video that's the size of the original canvas. Maybe I don't need it to be that big. Uh, maybe 1080 for Instagram. And did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, do it proportionally. Hold on. I didn't see what the original was. Hang on. Let me do it one more time. I don't want to make it stretched is my problem. Let's go and render video. Yeah, it did not change the width and the height at the same time. So in this case... I'm just going to pick a size. Let's go 720p should be good enough. There we go. 1280. But again, I don't trust these sizes because now it looks like that's going to make the width 1280 and the height. All right, let's switch it around myself. Let's make it 720 high, 1080, 720 by 12. Sorry. I'm really blowing this. Hang on for a minute. 1280. That's right. 720 by 1280 is what I want. 720 by 1280. There we go. And now if I were into this out, and I'm still wondering if those proportions will be right, but we'll figure out the proportions, but this is how you'd make the video. Render it out. 
and it will export the video out. I wasn't really. Oh, hang on. I wasn't really paying attention to where that was putting that. Let's make do that one more time. Render video. Battery. Let's make it battery three MP4. There we go. Render. All right, done. Okay, so now if we go look at that. Again, it could be stretched, I'm not sure of the proportions, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. Go to the desktop, there it is, and there's a video. So it's not stretched, good, it did the right thing. It's not looping though, so we would need to make sure that we have an option that loops it. So it just played it once and stopped. So um, that would be another thing that we'd have to contend with is how do we make the video loop if we wanted it out as a video? And I'm not sure that the render here is going to give me that option. Let's see. Render video. All frames. Yeah, I don't get I don't think I get a looping option here. So that would be the downside of doing the video here. If you wanted it to be an animation that continued to play, you'd have to um, do it do it a different way so it would loop. And I don't think there really is a way for video because video is going to play from the beginning to the end and stop. So it would have to be the player itself that loops it. All right, because otherwise it would just play for hours and hours and hours. So it actually needs to be a video that loops. Got it. All right. So I, I, see how I answered my own question? So with that said, that is how we do our animations in Photoshop from an Illustrator file. Start with a good Illustrator file, illustrating exactly what you want export an Illustrator file out as a Photoshop file with layers, then bring that layered file into Photoshop and you can animate it to your heart's content. All right, with that said, I wanna thank everyone for being here and watching. Uh, I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something about, you know, this is